To begin this piece, we're going to start by finding the middle of your paper. Um, in order to do this, I just mark the middle horizontally and vertically. Once we find the middle, we're going to go about half an inch either side of the middle. And then you see here, I put the ruler at the very edge and mark the opposite edge on the bottom. Making sure to keep the top of the ruler fairly close to the middle, we are going to connect both lines to form the dock. After that, I'm just adding some guides to kind of show the wood planks across the, across the dock. Most of these will get covered up later and we'll have to eyeball it, um, but for now it just kind of gives me a good sense of where I'm going to go with the piece. Next, we are going to very lightly draw a horizontal line um, across the paper. Um, and, and I usually say don't worry too much about uh, sketching uh, heavily, but for this piece, um, our background and our water is going to be a fairly light wash. So try to keep the pencil marks as light as possible. Taking a one inch flat brush, I am going to wet the entire paper with the exception of the dock that's sticking out. Once the background is fully saturated, we're going to start adding color. To begin with, I am going to be adding We are also going to mirror what we're adding in the sky down below in the water. So we're also adding a light wash of that same turquoise green down at the bottom. Next to the turquoise green in the sky, I'm going to be adding a lighter wash of Bright Clear Violet by Magello Mission Gold. And since I do like to blend on the paper, I'm going to um, add another uh, light layer of the turquoise green right on top of that purple to blend them in a little bit and again we're going to do the same thing at the bottom now my washes may look a little darker than they actually are um, just remember that your paint is going to dry a lot lighter than when you initially put it down as you can see here I'm going I'm also going on the opposite side of the dock um, to show that transition of the purple. Under that, we're going to be adding some Helios Purple by Sennelier. And I'm actually bringing that all the way down past the horizontal line into the water. And again, we are going to continue the same pattern that we have in the sky. We're going to continue that in the water. The water is going to be a direct reflection or mirror of the sky. So if you alternate um, more colors into your sky, just make sure that you repeat that down into the water.
as you can see I can still very barely see that horizontal line and this is going to come in very handy what I'm going to do now is add um, a very saturated black just across that horizontal line and I'm lifting my paper up because I want some of that black to fall naturally down the paper and this is going to be a reflection of the mountains that we're putting up right over it if you can see on the left side of my paper I held it down a little too much so the um, black uh, really got desaturated on top as it as it found its way down the bottom of the paper so I am going to go back in and add a little bit more on that side at this point, we don't want a very light wash of the black. We want it as dark as, it, as you can make it because we know that this is going to dry lighter when the paper dries. If you have any of the colors that pooled along the bottom of your paper, such as mine did, go in with a dry brush and just run your brush along the bottom and uh, scoop that water up. Make sure that when you're changing colors, you dry your brush off. And here, where the black fell too far down into the water, I'm going over it again with a little Helios purple and blending that in with a little bit of the bright clear violet. Next, we are going to take a flat brush. This one is a size three quarter Princeton flat brush and we're gonna go in dry. So if you uh, add water to your brush, dry it off on a piece of paper and swipe it across the bottom so where the water is located just swipe it across and the reason that I'm doing this is because I want it to look as if the water is just still and um, I don't want it to have the same texture per se as the sky so I want it to look as if it's it's the water is nice and still and it's sweeping across the bottom when you go over the black part make sure that you're drying your brush off before going back in. Otherwise, you're gonna trail some of that black along the water. I'm switching back to my one inch brush. The brush is dry and it's clean. And I am just lifting some paint off of the paper by running the very tip of the brush across the paper. And this is just going to give a little bit of appearance of just very, very light ripples across the water. You can go in as, as much as you want to or leave it as light as you want to. Just make sure that with every swipe of your brush, you clean it off on a paper towel. So continue doing this as much or as little as you want. The important thing here is not to mess too much with the water portion of um, your piece. You want it to dry as naturally as possible. So once you put the color down, once you swept that color across, and once you lifted some of it, just leave it. You can use a hairdryer to speed up the process, but don't add any more paint. Don't sweep your brush across anymore. Um, leave it as is. Allow your paper to fully dry before moving on to the next stage. So for this section, what we're going to do is just wet the sky, nothing else. So stop at that horizontal line. If you can't see the horizontal line anymore, just make one up. <laughs> um, stop at the horizontal line. We're going to darken the sky just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with the same exact colors that I used before. Um, unlike with galaxy pieces where I like to layer different colors on top of each other, that doesn't really work uh, when you're 
making a, a piece um, like this. So when you're making a sky, you want to keep the colors exactly the same and layer them on top of each other um, in the exact location that you did before. So once again, I'm not going in very heavy with the color. I'm going in with the same light wash that I did before. We're just adding another extra little layer of color in order to just make it a little bit darker than the water. When you are done with that, allow it to fully dry before moving on to the next step. If you don't let the piece dry, um, your mountains will start running into the sky. So allow it to fully dry. I'm going in with the lamp black once more and we're starting just above the horizontal line for um, where we placed that shadow, that shadow earlier. So here I'm just eyeballing the mountains. Um, you should do the same. One thing to keep in mind is that mountains are not fully straight, so don't um, draw a triangle on your paper. Um, move your brush a little, show a little bit of uh, like a rocky pattern on top of the mountain, um, and just give it a more natural feel to it. Um, we don't want it to be uh, fully straight and we don't want just one half of a triangle coming down your paper. Paper, Let it flow, have it go up, have it go down. Um, just give it a little bit of, of dimension to it. Across the middle of the paper, I am just uh, drawing little lines across, not fully connecting all of them. Um, it just, just a little something to kind of break up the, the sky and the water. And once we get to the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Um, if you wanted to just take a quick look at the way your shadows fell in the water, so the way that your black ran down into the water and follow that line, um, mirror that for the mountains. Um, so you see here, there's just a little bit of black on, on, on the be in the beginning of it. And uh, as we get towards the edge of the paper, the black is um, has dripped down further, so we're going to make that mountain peak a little bit higher. And this is why it's very important that your your sky is completely dry, so that you could have um, clean lines between the the sky and the mountains. Here, I am just adding um, a couple of little rock formations or little mountains if you will um, along the side this is not necessary you don't need to i just didn't want to um have just have the plain just water <laughs> there um but again you don't need to do this i just sometimes i add stuff on the sides if you do this um, if you do start adding um, a little mountains or rock structures on the side, don't make them perfectly even. Break them up. Let your brush skip across the paper um, to make it look a little bit more natural. We don't want any perfect lines here. We're going to continue adding um, little uh, mountains or rocks um, across the bottom of the paper as well. Again, not necessary. 
I just wanted to add a little bit more dimension to the piece. All right, at this point, we are going to go in and start working on our dock that's sticking out into the water. So I'm going in once again with the lamp black and I am filling in the entire rectangular piece there. Um, try to stay within the lines that you made for yourself. If not, then I eyeball it. Um, I mess up a little bit here and that's okay. You can make the dock a little bit wider if if necessary and we're filling in the entire thing with the black um we just keep in mind once again that the black is going to dry down if you look at the shadows in the mountains um, they dry down to a softer gray texture and that's how your dock is going to dry down it's going to dry down a little bit lighter so feel free to go in a little bit darker at this stage. Feel free to add um, splotch, splotches of, of darkness here and there uh, to show a more natural wood texture. Um, we don't want it all just one solid black block here. And while the dock is still wet, I'm going in with a more saturated black, so not as much water on my brush and a lot more paint than water. And I am going in and adding in the lines. So earlier I told you that I probably wouldn't be able to see the lines. And as you can see here, I lost the lines when I started adding my black in. But it gave me a good sense of what I wanted at this point. So I'm going to go in and start adding the, the lines to kind of uh, show that these are planks of wood across the dock. And um, I'm not really going to care too much if it spreads. If it doesn't spread, we're just adding it in. Some of it is going to blend into the paper. Some isn't. And that's okay. But we're doing this while the piece is still wet. I'm going to go in with a smaller round brush. This is the number one round. And I'm going to add a little bit of details to the wood planks. So I don't know if this is really how wood looks, <laughs> but this is what I'm going with. <laughs> I know that wood has squiggly little lines. So that's what I, that's what I went with. It doesn't have to be too realistic. Um, go with how you're feeling. If you know how to paint wood, then more power to you. Do it that way as well. Allow your piece to fully dry before moving on to the next step. To finish off this piece, we're going to be adding the sil a silhouette of a person just um, sitting on the dock, resting on the dock, sort of meditating. You can either eyeball this, and usually this is what I do whenever I'm drawing a silhouette of someone. You can pencil it in and then um, color it in black 
or paint it in black, or you can just not do it at all. Completely up to you. But this is just a really quick um, uh, process. Just draw shapes. So I drew a circle for a head, and um, then I went ahead and sort of did like a triangle for the body. I had his legs sticking out, so they're kind of sitting in like a little lotus position. Um, but break it down into shapes. It's the, it's the easiest way to get this done. And, um, and then you should be all set. Um, and there you have it. This is your final piece. Allow the piece to fully dry. And there you have a, a beautiful little painting of someone sitting on a dock enjoying the sunset or sunrise, however you want to look at it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.